After the death of George Floyd, we're taking a look at the history of the fear of black men in American society and how it often ends in violence against them. CBS This Morning's Saturday co-host Michelle Miller shows us just some of the unjust and racist accusations over the years. It's a long timeline. She's in New York's Union Square, the scene of protest over Floyd's death. Michelle, good morning to you. Good morning, Gail. As you well know, racial inequalities reveal themselves in many ways throughout American society, but nowhere is it more prevalent than in the criminal justice system, where black men often find themselves on the wrong side of the law because someone has falsely accused them. Something needs to happen where the point where we're not being killed every day. We feel like we haven't been heard. Our voices haven't been heard because it keeps happening. Protesters around the world have taken to the streets to call out police brutality and the systemic racism against black people. My sign says white silence equals white violence and I want everybody to recognize that because white people are the people oppressing black people. The problems were exposed with the killing of George Floyd, allegedly by police in Minneapolis. Please, 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 please. And once again with last week's now infamous 911 call by Amy Cooper to New York City police after a black bird watcher asked her to leash her dog. There is a man, African American, he has a bicycle helmet. He's recording me and threatening me and my dog. The list of false claims against African American men goes back decades. 1989 in Boston. Charles Stewart shot and killed his pregnant wife and wounded himself, but told police a black man did it. A murderous South Carolina mother five years later. In 1994, Susan Smith claimed she was carjacked by a black man who took off with her two young sons in the back seat. And last month in Florida, after the drowning of a nine-year-old autistic boy, allegedly by his mom. According to police, the mother, Patricia Ripley, as you mentioned, made up the story about her son, Alejandro, getting abducted by two black men. Why is it that we would be so quick to blame black folks in these cases for things they didn't do? Well, it's because they all knew that that would, or at least they felt that that would be believed. Author and educator Tim Wise says it's not fear that drives people to conflate blackness with crime, but power and a disregard for some people of color. American history is one in which white Americans, uh, by and large, have been taught to have indifference or even contempt for black life. We have defined the country as a white nation where people of color are here on a guest pass and it's a guest pass that we think we can revoke. CBS News contributor Ibram X. Kendi is a professor at American University. He says since the Jim Crow era, white people have had the right of using the police to their advantage. They recognize that they, that they have the privilege to call a police officer with the belief that the police officer, even if they're in the wrong, will be on their side. It's a painful history that educator Jane Elliott has been trying to fight for more than 50 years. I mean, the blue-eyed people are the better people in this room. Her famous brown eyes versus blue eyes experiment assigned heightened status to third grade students based on those arbitrary parameters in an effort to teach them about discrimination. It's time to recognize people as they are, which as is human beings. We're all in the same race. You need to educate yourself as to the truth of this situation instead of believing the lie that has been promulgated in this country for the last 400 years. The lie of several different races and the lie of the rightness of whiteness. It's a lie. She does not mince words, but I want to tell you about a study published last year by multiple universities that found that black men are two and a half times more likely to be killed by police than white men. But that study also found that police killings are the sixth leading cause of death among men of all races, ages 25 to 29. Think about that. I, I am thinking about that, Michelle. I, I really, I look forward to the day where black people in this country are not first judged as suspects and not law-abiding citizens first. I worry now when my son goes to walk his dog in L.A. in the climate that we're living in. I get very worried just when he steps outside doing ordinary things to walk the dog. 
And he said to me that somebody said to him, be tired, be exhausted, but never be diminished. So I try to hold on to that. But these are very scary times, very frightening times we're living in. I thank you for that story. It's very important to show the history. Thank you very much.